children. It's that time of year again. It's almost Halloween and Dia de los Muertos. Everywhere you look, there are pumpkins, Yay! ghosts, skeletons, candy skulls. Did someone see my name? Oh, hello, Scully. Hello, Rita. I'm a skeleton. Yes, I know. Everyone has a skeleton inside. That's right, Scully. Your bones give your body its shape and help you move around. We just be like a floppy jellyfish without our skeleton. Our skeleton also protects our internal organs, like our heart and lungs. And our skull protects our brain. Everyone has a skull to protect our brains. On Dia de los Muertos, one way we celebrate is by eating candy skulls. You may even find one with your name on it. My name is Scully, but my skull isn't made of candy. It's made of bone. <gasps> Scully, I just had a thought. We talk about our skull as if it's one thing, but it's actually made up of a lot of different bones. How many bones are there in your skull? There are 22 bones in my skull. Oh my, that's a lot of different bones. Let me tell you about my beautiful skull bones. Okay. There are eight larger bones on the top that make up the cranium. Yes, the cranium is the top part of the skull that protects the brain. 22 minus 8 leaves 14. What do the other 14 bones do, Scully? The other 14 bones are the facial bones. They're what make your face look like your face. Oh, so your skull looks different from a friend's skull. Yes, Rita. If your face looks different from your friend's face, that means your skull looks different underneath. How fascinating. So beauty is not just skin deep. Of course not. Skeletons are very beautiful. Right. You're right, Scully. Now, tell me more about your skull. Does it grow like other bones? Actually, babies are born with very large skulls. They are almost full size, so they don't have to grow as much as your other bones. Babies do seem to have very large heads. The rest of their body has to catch up. See these seams where the bones meet? Those are called sutures. Oh! Like what a surgeon uses to close up a wound. Those connections are very soft when you are a baby. This is because your brain grows faster than your skull. Mm, it's true. Humans grow big brains compared to their bodies. These soft gaps allow your skull to squish a little bit when you are being born. <gasps> oh, yes. That's why babies sometimes have to wear a little baby-sized helmet to help their skull get back to the right shape after they're born. There's a big suture on the top of the head when babies are first born. A soft spot called the fontanelle. It closes up around age two. That's right. We need to be very careful with this soft spot on the top of babies' heads. Did you know there are actually several spots on the baby's skull that are soft like this? And we call them all fontanelles. But that one on the top in the front is bigger than the others. So that's the one people talk about the most. Oh, you're right, Scully. Those other smaller fontanelles close faster. There are other holes in your skull that don't close. Isn't that right, Scully? That's right, Rita. I'm so glad you are an enthusiast for facts about the skull like I am. <laughs> yes. Now about these permanent holes, they are called foramina. And that's where blood vessels and nerves enter. Well, that makes sense. We don't want our brain completely sealed off in our skull. Your brain has to communicate with the rest of the body, and it needs to receive nutrients so it can do its job. The brain does a lot, you know. It's awesome! Yes, the brain is very important. It controls the rest of our body. We have to protect our beautiful brains and our beautiful skulls. That's why we should be careful to wear a helmet when we ride a bike or play football or do other activities where we might fall and hit our heads. 
Ouchie, ouchie. That would not be awesome. Rita, did you know that there's only one bone in my skull that I can move? No, Scully, I didn't know that. I guess I never thought about it. So when you talk, you only move one bone? That's right, Rita, the mandible. That's what you call the jaw bone. See this big bone here that holds your lower teeth in place? Oh, I see. Yes, you move that bone when you talk. And when you chew your food. You don't move your top teeth? No, touch your mouth and see. <gasps> Amazing! I had no idea! Um, Scully? Yes, Rita? I know this might be an awkward question, but where is your nose? Skeletons don't have noses. Yes, but why don't you have a nose? It's gone. Yes, but why? Because noses are made of cartilage. Oh! That explains it. Your skeleton is all made of very hard bone. But cartilage is soft and spongy. I miss my beautiful nose. Oh dear. Whimper, whimper. Nobody knows how much they love their nose until they don't have it anymore. Well, <clears throat> uh, uh, there is something where your nose would be. What is that? It's the vomer. Oh! Rita, do you know what the vomer is? No, what's the vomer? It's the bone in the middle of your face that separates the left and right nasal cavities. Oh, I see. The mandible and the vomer are the only single bones in your face. All the rest of your facial bones come in pairs. Oh, so your face is symmetrical. What is symmetrical, Rita? Well, if you draw a line down the middle of your face, each side looks like a mirror reflection of the other. Oh! We find symmetry very beautiful. Yes, my skull is very beautiful. That's why everyone wants to decorate with skulls for Halloween and Dia de los Muertos. Uh, I'm not sure about that, Scully. I think it might be to remember people who have died. Yes, we remember how beautiful their skulls were. How does your family celebrate Halloween and Dia de los Muertos, children? Tell us about it in the comments. Remember your beautiful skeleton this holiday season. Now it's time to watch another video about science from Socratica Kids. You get to pick one of these awesome videos. And don't forget to subscribe so we can be super science friends. Yes, subscribe. Subscribe for more me.